every year or two we try and bring on something quite special at Bremont when it comes to limited editions, um, and this year is no exception. Uh, we've got original parts of the first ever aircraft that flew, which is the 1903 Wright Flyer, and some of the material of which is here on this desk. And this is being integrated into the watch, which is quite, quite phenomenal when you think about it. Just before the aircraft went to uh, um, hang in the Science Museum in, in London until 1948, the aircraft was recovered. So the original material rested with Orville Wright at his home in Dayton until he died in 1948. And it's that original material that flew in 1903 that we have here on the desk. Wilbur Wright, he was the theoretician. And Orville Wright was uh, someone who could take his brother's ideas and make it into something that you could hold in your hand. They developed three things that are still part of you know, very basic aeronautical principles today. They understood the airplane had to balance on three axes in the air. Roll was the one that was very hard to understand. Um, so they developed a system of wing warping where the shape of the flyer's wings actually changed in the air just like birds' wings do. They thought about power and they thought about push. And they knew they needed some sort of um, propeller, but to date no propellers had ever been um, invented, at least for aeronautical purposes. So the brothers, by hand, carved out of wood, propellers that have only been um, improved upon by modern day standards, eight or 10%. They were both very interested in, in making sure of being credited for the things they had achieved. And when Uncle Will died in 1912, Orville um, more or less had the spotlight of the world on him. Orville was very mindful that everything about what they discovered was done by a team. This material, apart from being valued pretty much being priceless, um, has only ever been used by the likes of Neil Armstrong. It was sewn into his flight suit when he first landed on the moon. Um, it's been given to presidents in the past and it's hung in museums. But it's the only time material from 1903 Wright Flyer is going to be used in a project like this. As discussed, we've got some original material on the Wright Flyer, the lower left wing, which we're integrating into the watches. And this is actually, for a watchmaker, proved incredibly challenging. First, obviously, how you integrate that material into the watch, but also how we cut this very special dope fabric. Um, and we're using special laser cutting machinery to be able to cut these small segments that are being integrated within the rotor of each individual watch. We've been working on a proprietary movement for many years now with our Swiss partners. And what we wanted to be able to do was um, create something which is quite unique for Bremel and we can manufacture a number of those components in the UK. And we've done that and we integrate it within the Wright Flyer watch. Beautifully finished, um, 50 hour power reserve, offset into second hands and I think it's something that anyone who looks at will, will realise quite so how much effort has gone into it. All our limited editions generally have a charitable angle um, to them and it's been amazing for us to be able to work with the right foundation on this. Each revenue for every watch sold will be going to the restoration of Wilbur and Orville's family home in Dayton, Ohio, which is being opened as a museum and uh, you know, we're really proud to be part of that. So the Wright Flyer um, comes in a 43 millimeter case and it comes in uh, three different materials. We've done steel, uh, we're making 300 pieces of those, uh, 100 rose gold pieces, and our first ever white gold piece, we're only making 50 of those. And the white and rose gold come in white dials. To have a, a brand where a lot of the DNA comes from aviation, as is Bremel, to work with something quite so special, as the material I've got here, uh, it doesn't really get better.